to PBQ. This is Apostle Desmond Thomas uh, with prophetic and biblical question. Well, um, I want to deal with the issue of prayer today. The issue of prayer. You see, prayer has become, you know, I mean, even from time has been done amiss. And um, we have added, you know, certain things that need to be not to be added into um, prayer. Um, especially in the area of mediation, you see. So today I want to look at um, some of the errors, you know, that, you know, have been included in uh, our Christian prayer. You see, um, praying in the Old Testament as well is quite different from praying in the New Testament. So we need to understand that. And you see, many times uh, it is when people try to, you know, bring in some aspects of the Old Testament into New Testament prayer, you know, that brings the error. Also, um, I want us to understand also that there are traditions uh, that have been included in prayer, which are just traditions which own no biblical, you know, truth toward them. So today we are going to um, separate um, the biblical from the non-biblical, the scriptural from the non-scriptural. We're going to separate that which is tradition and what our churches hold on to other than what the scripture says. So I want us to look at these aspects of prayer and I want to answer some of the questions that have been sent to me on the topic of prayer, especially in the area of mediation. The Bible tells us that there is only one mediator between God and man, that is the man Jesus Christ. And the Bible says, uh, um, Jesus Christ told us, he said, on that day after he has died and gone back to heaven. It says, you shall ask me nothing. We're going to even find out that, you know, yes, we will worship Jesus. We can sing uh, praises to him. We can honor him. We can adore him. But when it comes to asking, even he himself said, whatever you ask the Father in my name, I will give it unto you. So therefore, we need to ask the Father in the name of Jesus uh, when we come to God in Prayer. Hallelujah. So let us now look into these teachings uh, and let's see the errors that have been brought into our Christian faith in the area of prayer and asking. We're going to see if there are mediators. We're going to see if that we're going to pray to, I mean, the dead saints. We're going to see whether we're going to pray to, I mean, the, um, 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 Mary, for example, or, or we say our prayers in the name of our general overseers. So let us see. Now I'm encourage you to just go into the word with me and let's see the errors that have been included in our prayer and in our asking and let us stop the the the, the things that are, are not right hallelujah because prayer remember it is worship so if we're going to worship god we need to worship him in spirit and in truth and we need to watch worship him in accordance with his word Thank you very much for welcoming me to your home or wherever you are. You're just watching your um, iPad or, you, or you're just watching your, your phone or, you know, whatever equipment you're watching. And um, thank you very much for welcoming me. And thank you very much for um, listening to the teachings today. Um, we are talking about the question of prayer. We're talking about the question of mediation in prayer and so i would like to answer a few questions uh, that have been brought to my attention the first question is uh, apostle we say prayers to virgin mary to pray for us and to talk to our son on our behalf is it wrong to pray to mary what about the dead saints can we pray to them you know, I know some of um, there are many Catholics who are, who are, who are, who are watching this um, um, channel and I, and I want to thank you very much, uh, you know, for watching and I want to thank, uh, I mean, whosoever it is that is sending these questions to us, um, hallelujah. Well, I want to make something clear from First Timothy chapter 2 
verse 5 to verse 8. He said, for there is one God. Many of us who don't have any problems with that. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And one mediator between God and man. Now, this is the aspect. One mediator. One mediator. No other mediator. No other sub-mediator. Hallelujah. There is one mediator between God and man, the man Jesus Christ, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Whereon to I am ordained a preacher and an apostle, I speak the truth in Christ and lie not, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath or doubting. So now, scripture here has told us that when we are praying, you know, and we should lift up hands to the Lord. And it tells us that there is only one mediator. So there is only one name that could be mentioned in prayer as mediator to God. The Bible says because he gave his life a ransom. So there is a, a connection between prayer and using the name in prayer and that redemption. Mary did not um, die for our redemption. The saints did not die for our redemption. So they cannot be mediation through which we can pray. Hallelujah. Glory to God. There is only one mediator between God and man. That is the man Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. So therefore, Paul here was writing about this topic of prayer. And he says that there is no go between because the word mediator means to go between. It means to advocate. Um, it means to intercede. Hallelujah. So in terms of intercession, advocation between God and man, the Bible says only one mediator and that is Jesus Christ um, of Nazareth, the son of the living God. You see, the subject about Mary um, being an advocate or an advocate for the saints to Jesus and Jesus doing things for us comes from the theory or comes from the doctrine that Mary is queen of heaven. And therefore, Mary can speak to her son and her son, just like he spoke to Jesus Christ when he was on the earth, when um, they brought, they took him to, um, what's it called, to this um, wedding in Cana of Galilee. And he said to them, whatever he tells you to do, do it. And he spoke to them about making wine. So these are, there are people who have this ideology that because Mary is the mother, Mother of Jesus Christ. Therefore, whatever Mary tells Jesus Christ to do, he will do it. So Mary is being put in sort of like an exalted position as the queen of heaven, talking to Jesus Christ like a prince, telling him what to do or asking him to do things and he will do it because she is a mother. Well, I want to say to you that there is no queen in heaven. I, I'm, I'm, I want you to understand that there is no queen in heaven. Um, heaven does not have a queen. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Jesus Christ is the Son of God and his Father, hallelujah, is God. So I want you to understand that the Trinity is not God, Mary, and Jesus. Now it's Jesus is the Father, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Mary does not own any position in heaven to make any mediation for anyone. It is in the Catholic tradition. There is nowhere in Scripture that justifies that at all whatsoever. So I want you to understand it. So therefore, this prayer is wrong. You know, many times, you know, Catholic and even non-Catholic many times in their ignorance say this prayer. Um, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with it. That is Scripture. It is really in scripture. So that part of it is wonderful. It's good. Blessed are thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Yes, that is good. But I mean, it is a word from the scripture and it should never be used in prayer. That was what the angel said to Mary. El Mary. So therefore, it is never used in scripture to pray to Mary. It was just a message being delivered to Mary by Angel Gabriel. 
So let us understand that. It is scripture, but it's not a prayer scripture. It's a message that was sent to Mary through the angel Gabriel, and this is how he addressed Mary. So let us understand that. Now let's look at the other part of the script, this prayer, which is very dangerous, which is very, very, very wrong, spirit, scripturally. It says, and Holy Mary, Mother of God. I want us to understand that is totally wrong. Mary is never and has never been Mother of God. God does not have a mother. I want you to understand that God has no mother. He has no father. He has no beginning. He has no end. He is the first. He is the last. He is the Almighty. And what you will say to me, I mean, is not Mary the mother of Jesus? Of Cause is the mother of Jesus. He is the mother of the humanity of Jesus. But I want you to understand that Mary's Jesus Christ's life did not start when Mary gave birth to him. Jesus Christ was in the beginning. The Bible says in John 1, 1, in the beginning was the word, which is Jesus, and the word was with God, the Father, and the word was God. And then later on, the scripture says, and the word became flesh and dwell among us. So it was when Jesus became came flesh and dwell among us. That's when Mary came in. So Mary was the mother of the flesh of Jesus. He was not the mother of the Godhead. He, she was not the mother of God. She is the mother of the humanity of Jesus. Mary is the mother of the man Jesus, not the God Jesus. And so therefore, it is wrong to say Mary is the mother of God. And therefore, it goes on to say, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of death. Mary does not pray for any sinners or at the hour of their death. And um, the Bible tells us that Jesus Christ is our great high priest who is now at the right hand of God, always making intercession for us. So therefore, I want you to understand that, that um, it is wrong to say any prayer to St. Peter or to St. James or to any, all of those. And it is wrong to say prayers to Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ, because the scripture says that there is only one mediator between God and man, the man Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I want you to understand that many times, you know, Mary has been put in a position um, in scriptures, uh, sorry, in the Catholic faith that is not held in scripture. Understand that. Now, I mean, one of the things the Catholic says as well, um, I'm not here to bash Catholics, uh, but I'm here to just put scriptures in order. That Mary is perpetual virgin, that means she is forever virgin, which is wrong. Again, I want us to understand that after Mary gave birth to Jesus Christ, uh, she and Joseph came together sexually and they gave birth to all the children. And I can prove it to you in scripture. The Bible says in Matthew 1 25, and he knew her not, that is Joseph, um, till she brought her firstborn son and he called his name Jesus. So Mary and Joseph came together afterwards. Now, if you also read the scriptures in Matthew chapter 13, um, sorry, Matthew 3, 21 to 32, and, uh, and the Bible tells us that, that Jesus Christ had brothers. Um, there came then his brethren and his mother, um, and, and standing outside said unto him, calling him, and the multitude said about him, and they said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren um, without seek thee. So therefore, if you read also in Matthew um, chapter 13, verse 54 to verse 57, it tells us that uh, Jesus Christ has brothers. And so Mary gave birth, and all these brothers did not come supernaturally. They came um, through the same process. Now, um, I want us to go to question um, number um, two. Apostle, I had Pentecostals pray in the name of the God of their general overseers, apostle um, and leaders. Is this the right way to pray? You see, the new covenant is quite different from the old covenant. In the new covenant, Jesus Christ taught us, he said, um, we need to pray to the Father in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, not 
in the name of the God of our general overseers or in the name of the God of our apostle or in the name of the God of our leader. God need no sub. God need no sub. I want to receive, repeat that again. God need no sub mediator. Regardless of whatever grace is being poured into the life of your general overseer, it does not qualify prayer in the in their name whatsoever in whatever capacity i want you to understand that you see jesus christ taught us uh, that even in this new dispensation uh, uh, this new covenant and uh, um, regardless of um whatever uh, the way you look at it or what you want to call it um he is saying um in john chapter 16 and verse 23 he said in that day ye shall ask me nothing vaguely vaguely i say unto you whatsoever ye shall ask the father in my name he will give it to you so even in this i mean period this era that we are living in jesus christ said ask the father in my name period and he will give it to you you see let us understand that you see in the old covenant uh, um people will pray in the name of god the, i mean um, the god of abraham the god of isaac the god of jacob because the covenant in that dispensation was made to those people and god called himself by the name of those people and um, so we need to understand it was based on the covenant and in this last days god is making a has made a covenant through his son jesus christ our lord and that's why only his name qualifies intermediary between god and man and in asking in prayer we are going to we, we, if we look at scripture we'll find that there was nowhere in the scripture in the new covenant where any of the disciples of paul and all of those people pray in the name of god in the name of paul uh, or in the name of god the god of saint paul in the name of uh, the god of saint peter in the name of you see i mean we are you know in a kind of way you know becoming catholics in our way you know pentecostals these days uh, because they are the ones who are praying i mean asking peter to pray for them or asking john to pray for them the the dead ap the, um, apostles so let us be very careful i mean not to begin to go into idolatry even though we i know many of us love our general overseer we thank god and we appreciate the grace of God upon their life, but the grace does not get to the point where you have to pray um, to God in the name of God, in the name of your apostle, or in the name of your leader. It is an heresy, and we need to get rid of that. And no general overseer should encourage that. If you are true and you know the dispensation that you're living in, you see, scripture says this in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. It says, God who has sundry times and in diverse manner spake to the fathers by the prophets. Yes, because God was speaking by by the prophet but in this last days he says he is speaking to us uh, by his son uh, that's what he says in hebrews chapter um one verse um, one and two whom he has appointed heir of all things by whom also he made the worlds i want you to understand that uh, if you are going to be praying and uh, um, to inherit anything this last days you have to do it in the name of jesus not through any sub in intermediary you can imagine you know if every one of us he said it creates so much division it creates so much you know i mean i mean uh, um, confusion in the body you can imagine you know every person on that different churches uh, on the different uh, um um general officers are uh, beginning to pray in the name of uh, the god of apostle desmond in the name of god i mean that is nonsense uh, let me let me tell you this we need to understand that you need uh, to pray to god in the name of Jesus Christ. No, so that's why the veil of the temple was torn into twain, so that we can all now come boldly into the throne of grace where we can obtain grace in time of need. Let us be very careful. The, the putting our leaders in a, in a pedestal, I mean, that does not warrant them, I mean, it is um, um, out of order. Let us understand that. You see, so in the Old Testament, because God made a covenant to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, wherever there is covenant, wherever a covenant is made, God reveal himself by a name. So that's why in the Old Covenant, he revealed himself by the name of 
God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's why we found out that Abraham's servant, when he was going to look for a wife for I mean, his son Isaac, he prayed um, in Genesis chapter 24, verse 12. It says, O God of my master Abraham. The covenant was not made to him. The covenant was made to Abraham. So he had to call on the God of his master Abraham. We see also when God appeared to Isaac in Genesis chapter 26, verse 24, God revealed himself to him by the name of Ab God of Abraham, his father. So we see also in, in, in Exodus chapter 3, verse 6, uh, um, God called himself to Moses to identify who he is and who he is, he is the one speaking to Moses. He said, I'm the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, because the covenant was made to them. In this last days, the covenant is made to us in the name of Jesus. So only Jesus' name should be mentioned in prayer. Somebody might say to me, oh, pastor, well, what about, I mean, Elijah? Elisha said, where is the God of Elijah? Doesn't he? But now let's look at what happened before that. You know, Elisha, Elisha asked, Elijah asked Elisha. He said, what do you want me to do for you? He said, oh, I want you to give me the anointing that is in you. So therefore, when Elisha, Elijah went up to heaven, the Bible tells us is mantle came down and Elisha took the mantle. He was trying to confirm whether the same God is with him and the same God, hallelujah, has given him that double portion. So he struck the water and said, where is the God of Elijah? But let me say this, never again in scripture did you hear him praying in the name of my father or in the name of my father, the God of my father, Elijah. Never again. So I want you to understand that. You see, the scripture also let us know um, Jesus Christ was talking um, to the Pharisees. He told them this. Uh, he says uh, um, 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 that he is the God that was standing before Abraham. He says, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day and saw it and was glad. So who is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Is the God is Jesus Christ. The Bible says, and hallelujah, and God has, who has sundry times and in diverse manners spake to the fathers by the prophets, hallelujah, as in this last day spoken to us through his son, hallelujah, whom he has appointed here of all things and by whom also he made the ages or the worlds. So therefore Jesus was the one in front of Abraham. Jesus was the one in front of uh, um, 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 Moses. Uh, Jesus was so therefore he has been revealed to us now uh, as Jesus. Uh, and so now it is best uh, that we pray to God the Father in the name of Jesus Christ only. Period. Now let's see this. Uh, when Jesus died and rose again from the dead, um, uh, Mary Magdalene wanted to touch him. But listen to what he said um, in John chapter 20, verse 17. Uh, he said, and Jesus said unto her, touch me not, for I am not yet ascend to my father. And go, go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father. My God and your God. So what is that saying to us? It put the apostles, it put every one of us in the same place. God is our father. God is the father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is our father. God is the father of your genital of fear. Say, God is your father. So we are all put in the same level, coming to God and praying to the father in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the son of the living God. So therefore, let us take away all of this confusion from our meat and let us go to God as he said in his word to the Father in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Well, this is a two-part series and so therefore I want you to continue with us because there are two more other questions I would like to answer in the next segment. So I want you to tune with us again so that as we continue again with this teaching. So now, um, I wonder if you have heard or you have read um, about some of um, the materials that we have for you. I've read several books and I believe that those books are going to be a blessing to you. So therefore, um, there's going to be a commercial and it's going to tell you about uh, some of the books that I've written and they are available at the Publish Word com they are available at Amazon they are available at Barnes and Noble so therefore you just go there and get um, a copy of the books and I believe they will bless you <laughs> 